now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch. Here today with my spectacular co-host, we've got the educated as always sublime. Boo. Hello. I say this because of the random adjective generator. We also have the mysterious Ah. basket. Ayo. And we're here to bring you the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name we came up with in 2007, where we talk everything from the video game to the trading card game to everything in between. Uh, and today's definitely one of those in between days, I think, because uh, we're definitely gonna we're gonna talk about the Pokemon anime. So first of all, um, there are timestamps as always in the bottom in the show notes. You can definitely skip the topic today. It will contain spoilers for the Pokemon anime. If that is something that you are worried about having spoiled for yourself, just skip it. You can listen to the quiz. I know that's what everybody wants to listen to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about the topic anymore, guys. They just want me to ask you questions for an hour and a half. But yeah, we've got uh, we got lots lots to talk about today. But of course, uh, like every episode, I want to know how you guys are doing. So what what have you guys been up to lately? How's life? Busy. Which I can is imagine. Good. Which is good. Yeah, it's good to be busy. Yeah. So much life. <laughs> yeah. Man, I keep thinking about it. It's like we talked about, well, obviously, like the po- the Pokemon anime ended in Japan this week. And I d- like, I don't want to touch on the topic too much, but I like definitely had me like thinking throughout the week or at least the past couple of days after it finally aired the last episode. Like I was just thinking about like how much like the Pokemon anime like impacted me and like some of my memories. Like I just remember it's like Saturday morning cartoons, right? Yes, which is why I thought about this topic. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's more that I remember Saturday morning cartoons. Or do you remember after school? Yes. It would be on during the weekday even. Yeah. I do. I remember that. I mean, that was always a big thing for me. I remember being a kid and Pokemon being on after you get home. Uh, they would also air it before school, too. I remember they'd have the same block before school and after school. Yes, I remember having, uh, like, cereal in the morning, yes. getting ready and what, yeah. Yeah, I remember this. Trying yeah. to watch it as much as I could before it was time to go, yeah. I just, I, I, but, like, the impact that it had on me is so significant. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's definitely, I hate to feel like an old man because, like, there's definitely things, like, I see that are occurring that make me go, like, you look at Journeys. Right. Where we didn't have like a set path to the anime, really, other than like Ash is battling people and his score will randomly go up. And I just remember like thinking in the anime, like it really crafted our version of like what we thought the Pokemon world was. Right. I'd say the anime more so than anything. And if we, you know, very easy progression, like eight badges, go to the league, have fun. That happened several times. And Journeys really tried to push the idea of just adventuring with Pokemon, period. And I think even more so, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is trying to push that. Yeah. As well, right? Because you have the three tracks, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's the Titan Pokemon, and one of them is the Gym Challenges. So Gym Challenges are still there, but it's only part of a larger picture instead of being the whole picture. And I don't know, a little little bit of me just like feels old man when I'm just like, man, I don't know if I like the change. (laughs) And I'm just like, no, I should embrace it. Like, this is a good thing. Like, they're expanding. They're giving us more options. But some days I'm just like, man, I really, I like, I just have very vivid memories of the first time the Indigo League episodes came up on Kids WB. Yeah, so good. Or like when you get a second Pikachu that has a different nickname. Yeah. I'm like, what? What is this other Pikachu? That block of episodes is like so ingrained in my mind as being like the epitome of the Pokemon anime. Well, it's ingrained in my mind, but yeah. Yeah, I, I well, and maybe not the epitome, but like, it's just definitely like a momentous occasion. You know what I mean? And I just think to myself, this is crazy. It, like, it, like yeah. this is, this was great. I have fond memories of, I remember Muck taking on the Bellsprout that was a ninja. Oh my gosh, that Bellsprout <laughs> is an icon. I just remember that. Like the Bellsprout, like, I mean, it was essentially like boxing and just like throwing people around. And then you see Ash, because Ash caught extra Pokemon back then. 
that we never saw, which I think is actually something that I miss in the anime, missed being in the anime for a very long time, because for the longest time, he's only been catching Pokemon up until he fills his six-man roster, and then he's just done. Yeah. And I kind of miss him having extra Pokemon that we just don't see, and then he just brings them to some random battle, and they do incredibly well, like Krabby turning, evolving to Kingler during it's the a league. Kingler, yeah. That was awesome. You've got the Muck during the league. And then you even look at like Orange Islands, and he's just got he's just got Tauros. Oh, I think Tracy's in the last episode. Actually, he is in the last is, episode. Yeah. It was yeah. it was actually really funny to me. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was actually in the last episode. I I was just like, oh man, we gave Tracy the last episode. I guess that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk more about that. Yeah, topic. I think that's okay. It's fine. It's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like this week, man, it is really you got. I mean, I I'm really happy that you suggested the the topic sublime. Uh, when we get there, I'm very very happy that you suggested that topic because I just have so many thoughts and feelings, and maybe it's just therapeutic for me to get them out as well. <laughs> yeah, I think you kind of went on there. I think longer than you thought you would just now. <laughs> I absolutely did. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. Same, but I'm trying to. Yeah, like I feel really bad because when they announced it that they were ending the anime, I was, like, in the car on the way to the airport to go to the Arlington Regionals. I had just woken up because yeah. West Coast. Um, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, it was like, what? I can't believe. Wow. I, I Yeah, I've been thinking about it. Yeah, I, I had I had feelings that whole weekend. I just had feelings mm-hmm. that whole weekend. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm just like, I never thought they would do this. Right. Yeah, but let's save the rest for the topic because there's yes, just too I, much. I'm to so talk sorry. About. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is just pre-topic. We're just uh, we're getting you guys revved up. I know, right? Because the thing is, we're all of the age where we saw it when it first came out. I know. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. A little peek behind the curtain. Thatch was wondering how we were going to fill 20 minutes talking about this. But yeah, I, I mean, that was like, what, like five? You could just talk and I know, I, touch on any of it. So I think we're going to be fine. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so no, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Things have been going well. <laughs> yeah, life is good. Yeah, I, I've also been prepping for, I'm going to Fort Wayne Regionals next weekend. Yeah, I've been talking to Seth about that. Seth and I are pretty hyped. Uh, it actually, so... You're taking the same deck. Yeah, it came full circle. I never thought... Well, I thought one day Seth and I would bring the same deck to our regionals. I just didn't think it would be this soon. I thought it'd be post-rotation because, I don't know, He, we, we've we been talking and then I definitely have to like reel him in because our deck list is pretty close. It's not quite the same. You no, know, I'm aware it's not the same, but it's the same deck. Yeah, no, I would no, I would love to for us yeah. to run the same deck list. Well, you know, you might have different uh, taste and, you know... He has a slightly different style, which I, I'm not going to fault him for. I, I've i got some weird hodgepodge that, well, not really hodgepodge. I, I, like, I, built the, I built the deck once with some cards that I really, like, the cards that I thought might be fun. And I'm like, uh, talking to myself, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll incorporate some of your stuff. And then I tried it for a little while. And I'm slowly just, like, full circle going back to my original deck list. <laughs> As, like, I'm, I'm like, ah, oh, well, this card was kind of better. And then, I, like, I'm almost back to the exact same deck list. I think I've taken out one card. <laughs> and that's it. Know what you like. <laughs> know what you like. Yeah. Exactly. So it's some of it's down to taste. Yeah, but we plan on. I think we're both playing Gudra, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm very excited. I yeah. I was thinking about playing Lugia Flying Pikachu, which is like a really really off variant of Lugia, but it handles the mirror really well because Pikachu is super effective against Lugia. And but uh, it's uh, there's more thought that goes into that. And after the last regional, I just want a deck that I don't really have to think about. Mm-hmm. I can just like go burr, you know. Because the deck does one thing. You get Gudra going and then you then you play. And that's it. Lugia is just like, well, I gotta get like one Lugia, and maybe I wanna power up this guy instead of that guy based on the matchup, blah blah blah. So I'd much rather just be like, no. Gudra. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Maybe last minute I'll be like, Lugia flying Pikachu, that's the play. <laughs> Tina. For me it would have to be Giratina. I think you should just play next format for Giratina. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe I will in Portland. Yeah, it's really big. It's a really big deck right now, post-rotation. It turns out that, like, Scarlet Violet doesn't change too much in terms of the meta. Lugia gets a lot worse because it loses a lot of its special energies. But Giratina was kind of was kind of king before that. 
Um, so Giratina and uh, Lost Box are still doing pretty well. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I feel like they will never make a bad, like a truly bad Giratina card in the TCG. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely it's not. It's like one of those Pokemon, like Vileplume. Anytime Vileplume's in the TCG, I dread it because they always give it something nasty. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's going to be some kind of item lock or something not nonsensical. Yeah. yeah. But like, I love whatever Giratina's in because it's like, it's always going to do something fun and quite often notable. So Yes, you are correct. You are correct. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead then and let's cut it over to the uh to the news let's cue that epic music coming to you live from the lavender town radio tower this just in Welcome to the news. We've got a few things to talk about. In Japan, Arvin won the 2022 Famitsu Award for Best Character. And Scarlet and Violet also won Best Story. It feels correct. It feels correct. Man, I, I will continue to say it. I think I think Scarlet and Violet and Sword and Shield are just night and day. They, yeah. they feel two completely different games in terms of like the effort put in. Like, sure, Pokemon or Scarlet and Violet have like a lot of graphical and performance issues. Yeah, but it also had higher ambitions. Yeah, I think it was far more ambitious, and I I appreciate the uh, I appreciate that. Uh, additionally, uh, we got a name for the new Pokemon anime called Pokemon Horizons uh, in the West. That's what we're gonna call it. And then they're reintroducing all of the characters on Twitter that they already introduced, which I I just find awkward. I'm like, how many times do you have to tell me Freed exists? Like, I I understand these characters exist. <laughs> you already told me about them. Uh, but they're they're all they're all about telling us now uh, all over again. Uh, so yeah, new anime coming out. Uh, what's also a fun fact is there was like a manga series for a half second that was called Pokemon Horizon in the West. They like translated it. It was for like Sun and Mo- it was very recent. It was like Poke. It was in it was in Sun and Moon. Oh, I think I vaguely remember something like that. Yeah, I think uh, we actually all saw it because I think we were all in Dayton, Ohio. And we went to that comic book store and we found it there. And- oh, I loved that store. I yeah. want something called Pokemon Event Horizon. Oops. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. We've got uh, Scarlet and Violet news. I believe that's you, Basket. Yes, sir. Uh, so the wake walks on in OU while uh, Uber's banned Moody because of uh, Scovillian. Yeah, Scovillian does not need Moody, and I don't know why they gave it to it. Um. <laughs> I actually don't know what the walk wakes did. Did, did, did walking it's the waking? Uh, yeah, did walking, walking wake? wake did walking? Yeah. Did walking wake stay in OU? They didn't ban it. Uh, yeah, guess so. Uh, it did not. Oh my gosh, they didn't ban it. You know what? Some people just love being miserable. <laughs> uh, I, I okay for you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess they didn't ban it, so that's cool. Velociraptor Suicune continues. Yeah. Yep, Velociraptor Suicune. I. I really hope that they come out with the other two, but I don't think they will. I know. I'm not know. holding my breath for like, you know, for something lightning and something fire or something like. I mean, I totally see it coming in the DLC. Uh, I I feel like you're more hopeful than I am. Well, I I mean, I wouldn't put it past them to like tease something like that with him and then like just not do it. But also at the same time, why waste the opportunity? I think what will happen, my guess, because who knows what they'll do, but my guess is that we'll get Pokemon like Walking Wake and the Verizian, because mm. uh, I don't want to call it Iron anything, because I'm... Iron gonna, Leaves, because um, the right. names like, are I'm just really gonna call it, uh I'm just going to call it Future Verizian. Um, <laughs> exactly yes. right. Um, point being, I think they'll maybe take something from other uh, legendary trios or quartets, and we'll get like kind of one from each different like quartet i okay, kind of i, I kind of like that idea i'm kind of behind that right like they did suicude and verizian those aren't from the same anything right no. so like maybe we'll get like a uh, reggie rock uh or it'll be called iron wall or something iron wall oh my god uh, right uh, <laughs> and then you'll get like who, mm, like a zapdos from the past or like yeah you know that would be actually. I think they'll I would, have a lot of fun just designing whatever they want. But I well, who knows? I, you can never predict I, them on I that. honestly think that's kind of what Paradox Pokemon are. It's just so like the designers can take old designs and just have fun with them. Yeah, which I mean they have. Yeah, obviously, because like on, honestly, all of these Paradox mods just look like fan art. 
Like they just honestly look like fan art. I mean, yeah. I've seen some great fan art of Paradox Mons. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's kind of in the same vein as Ultra Beast to some extent, right? Where they just like kind of broke the rules on purpose. Although it's more fun because like you're taking inspiration. From, yes, that's like, that's true. Like, and it's so fun because they're all like at least going to have competent stats. So it's like, ooh, is your favorite Pokemon Jigglypuff? We have a competent Jigglypuff. <laughs> or like, oh, do you love Mizdravas? You can have a 570 BST Mizdravas. Get into it. Like, I, I, I don't think know. That's I don't know who is like the most excited about that at all. But I mean, Iron Bundle, Iron Bundle, though, right? Like, okay, okay. Deli that's Bird. Fair. Can we talk about the fact that there is a Deli Bird running around? Like that part. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Well, uh, well, move on to uh, moving on down. I guess, yeah. I guess it's like the Puckle, Puckle news. news. Yeah, the Prepare for Trouble um, tournament signups will probably launch sometime this week. So enjoy some Regulation C for on carts, and we're aiming for matches to start around April 9th or tenth. I should sign up for that. Yeah, if you're uh, into it, get yeah. into it. I mean, I like VGC is a fun time in general. I think it is. So I agree. Uh, also, I found out recently that they kind of fixed timer on cart. Um, it's not entirely perfect, but there is a way to get sixty a sixty minute timer back. Unfortunately, you have to like do you have to like set up like an online competition yourself, but you can get sixty minutes back. Um, unfortunately, That's, you have to like do it something. a day in advance. That's so it's something. So, it's something. So it's something. Um, it's something that like at least we could do internally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we could do like yeah. an internal like puckle staff tournament or something. And we could all have a good time with that. That's yet another reason I've always liked VGC is like the timer is not an issue. Yeah, the timer is not an issue in VGC. But we can go back to OU and like have fun again. Yeah, uh, I miss playing OU on cart, and I think this is a good step in the r- step in the right direction. And maybe maybe Gen Ten will give us the thing we want. Uh, we'll see. <sighs> uh, yeah. uh, all right, uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, Togetic is going to be released or going to be the April fifteenth Community Day. With Togekiss getting Aura Sphere. Oh, very cool. Uh, it's a boring shiny, but it's thematic for the Easter season, because I believe Easter is the weekend before this. Um, and I believe it's April 9th. Togekiss with Aura Sphere on Pokemon Go, that's kind of scary. <clears throat> is it? I would not know. To me, I, it is. I, just I, because, I will believe you. Yeah. I will believe you. Yeah, because like, one of the things is- that will actually like the, take <laughs> take it out is Iron, or I mean, sorry, Steel type Pokemon. So Aura Sphere is going to be pretty helpful. That's true. Moving on, I guess uh, talking about Pokemon Go, we have Rocket Grunts, and that's oh, something for you to yeah. talk about. Yeah, so the Rocket Grunts, um, they're not going to be shiny locked anymore, which is cool. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I imagining that, it's going to be the same rate. Yeah, I didn't know that they were shiny locked. I'm going to be honest. I mean, neither did I, because I don't really see a whole lot of shinies except for on like community days. Yeah, exactly. I, I've run into shinies like randomly like i I mean i don't play hardcore pokemon go either like i i'll get into it like during the summer and then i'll stop playing once it gets too cold to walk outside um yeah yeah and, <laughs> i'm I a mean, fair weather fan as well <laughs> yeah, quite literally though, right? <laughs> yeah uh, quite literally and yeah so uh, i yeah so I, I don't play hardcore but i i've run into like a few just random shinies um, the problem is my wife really likes to collect the shinies on Pokemon Go more so than myself, so I like I always trade them over to her. Um, though there was one time I couldn't because they don't let you trade shiny mythicals to people. Oh. Um, and so I actually caught a shiny Darkrai once, and sh- I couldn't trade it over to her. And I was like, yeah, well, maybe I was the one that went and hunted Darkrai with a bunch of people, so maybe I could keep it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But, yep. All right. Uh, TCG news, which is actually really exciting right now. Yeah, the Scarlet and Violet TCG releases this Thursday, which also means that Live will have a new ladder uh, and will rotate. And they have confirmed that there will be new starter decks for the new mechanics. Yeah. And also cool. that Scarlet and Violet packs will have uh, six cards. Yeah, Live only gives you five cards when you submit a booster pack right now, which uh, is kind of, yeah, it's kind of dumb. Uh, I don't know why they did that, but it's it's fine. It is what it is. Choices, choices. There's just like a lot of change in Pokemon right now, and it's scary. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
this that makes me feel like old man yells at clouds. <laughs> yeah, it, I yes, that I mean it's part of it, right? I because I also see like I the aesthetic of Pokemon Live is not the same as the aesthetic of PTCGO, and I sit there and I go, I remember in 2011 <laughs> submitting TCG cat codes <laughs> uh, and get an opening ten cards, but it's usually not too bad because they actually give you a lot of free cards on TCG Live, um, and they always they give you good cards for free. I should preface that. Like on the <laughs> on the battle pass, you usually get like a bunch of good free cards. Like they'll give you like half a Gardevoir deck, and if you level up the battle pass the entire way, you'll have all of the cards for a good Gardevoir deck. Nice. Well, yeah. So I uh I think this is okay. I think live is okay. There's definitely some bugs. I they the thing that's really weird, and it's not in the news uh document, is that they they announced that live is getting the update and PTCGO isn't getting the update for Scarlet and Violet. But they haven't announced that live is leaving beta status yet. So, which that concerns me because there's a lot of things that are broken on live. Oh man. Yeah. And they're already adding new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They add new. There's always like something that's just like semi game breaking with live. So it's, it's something to watch out for. And, uh, next up, we've got, um, Paldea Evolved has been officially revealed as the next English expansion. It's, uh, releasing June 9th. And it'll have EX cards for the starters and Treasures of Ruin and have three new Terra Pokemon in Dedenne, Sloking, and Fortress. Yeah, we've seen a few, <laughs> and, uh, we've seen a few of these because the set got officially revealed in Japan this week, I believe. Yes. It's, uh, I think the, I, I don't remember, uh, I know we've seen Fortress, but I don't remember if we've seen Dedenne or Sloking yet, um, in terms of the Terra, Terra, Terra Pokemon. But Terra Pokemon aren't actually that exciting, all in all, but they're okay. Yeah, I'm kind They're of, okay. um, yeah, the, the mechanic, I don't know. Well, I, I we'll, imagine, we'll see how it goes. I imagine it's going to be more interesting in future sets. Yeah. Uh, because my assumption is eventually we're going to get Terra Pokemon that are different types than the Pokemon they are currently. Right. Which would be, you know, the way to do fun, it, in my opinion. Which would be fun. <clears throat> Um, I think that's what they need to do, and I think right now they're just kind of like easing us in so that there's not like too much shock with the new sets. Mm-hmm. So they're doing okay. Uh, it's very interesting. All right. Well, uh, it's time for Puckle's Pokey Prediction, and because everything's anime this week, um, when do you think we'll see the next Pokemon movie, and do you think it will use the new anime cast or be more standalone with characters, kind of like Hisuian Snow? I don't know that we'll see a Pokemon movie. Is like, are those profitable in Japan still? Like, I don't know. I feel like COVID was like their perfect opportunity to cut that off and not have to worry about making an annual Pokemon movie. I don't know. Is there a Pokemon movie you guys are uh, thinking about? Mm, no, I don't really have any. Uh, um, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it, at this point, if they want to make a Pokemon movie, it's just because they're interested in making one. Because they yeah, make it. I. Yeah. I would be okay with something more like Power of Us again, where like it's a different universe Ash and we just do whatever. Like I think that would be a cool way to keep Ash going. <laughs> that would be a great way. To, I was just thinking, hey, you could do like a movie and you know, my Ash could do something. Yeah. I, I think you could just have like an a movie with Ash in it and that's it. And it doesn't have to be the same Ash that we know and love. It could be like that alternate universe Ash. So it, it's definitely something to consider. But uh, I think that's what they should do. I don't. I don't know if that's what they will do. Um, the thing I can see is like they'll bring the character. There's, there's just gonna be like one movie for the next three years, and they're gonna put like Liko and Roy in it, and th- that's gonna be it. Like that's that's our movie, and it's gonna relate to the plot somehow, uh, just like <laughs> every other anime. But yeah. All right. Well, that is gonna be it for our uh, for our pokey predictions. We're gonna go ahead. And kick it on over then to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark from the Dunsparce Gang, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. 
Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. Welcome to the Poke Quiz. Thank you for that introduction. We're going to jump right into it. Our first question is going to come to you from Professor Snag. In Generation 1, there was only one Rock-type Pokemon that did not have a four times weakness of some kind. What was that Pokemon? Aerodactyl. Wait, let me think about this. No, yeah, it's Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl... Aerodactyl is correct. That is the answer. The rest of them are all rock ground or rock water types. Rock ground or rock water. And so they all are weak to four yeah. times weak to grass. <laughs> grass, yeah. And tap of them to water yeah, as well. There, yeah, there were no like good rock types oh, in gen in gen uh in gen one. Well I guess Golem was actually seeing some play competitively. It. Um the problem with Gen 1 is, and like, actually, the meta is... actually, Rhydon was stronger than Golem, yeah. Yeah, Rhydon was stronger than Golem. It hit, like, Gen 1 hit, like, some, uh, hit, like, Team Singularity at some point. <laughs> like Yeah, although, wasn't Aerodactyl actually really good, because speed was tight to crit? Uh, it wasn't as good as, like, Alakazam. Interesting. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Gen 1 meta is, like, absolutely ridiculous, and I don't want to play it. Like, <laughs> I'd much rather play modern Pokemon. All right. Well, you guys are one for one. Your next question. Thanks, Basket. Your next question is going <laughs> to come from. No, thanks, Snag. Sorry, I meant to say thanks, Snag, because we got the question. <laughs> yeah. Your next Was one is going to be from <laughs> Trainer Unknown. Uh, this non gift Pokemon cannot be nicknamed after obtaining it and can only be given a na- nickname by going to a name raider in earlier games. Who's that Pokemon? Uh,. Non gift, wow. uh, non gift Pokemon that can't be nicknamed when you obtain it. It's, so you have to go to the name raider to nickname it. In uh, which generation? Or did it not say? Uh, it did not it say. Didn't say. Um, uh, it didn't say. Prior to guess. the games where you could just like change their name whenever, like. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking. Oh wait, Pokemon. So there's only one answer. There is only one answer. Yeah. I was maybe gonna guess Fresh Ram and. Uh, uh, Zek- Reshiram and Zekrom because of that whole situation where you kind of have to go through the story um, immediately fighting right after you catch it, you know? Um, but clearly not, because that would be two different things. Um, um, I feel like... Non-gift. Oh, That's so hard. It been, so, it, so that means that it would have had to have been a trade, right? Or does Not it, necessarily. Does it not necessarily. Fun? It's the only because like there's multiple trade Pokemon um, that that would apply to. I will tell you, it's not a trade. Yeah, it is definitely an odd, uh, an odd duck in terms of how you get it. Um, don't read into the word duck. <laughs> don't please don't read into the uh, word duck. I, it is noted, not meant to lead noted. you anywhere. No. Please Psyduck, don't think of duck. Psyduck, final action. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe Spiritomb. Spiritomb's weird. Like Spiritomb's real weird. It's weird. Like, I'm just thinking of Pokemon that are, like, weird to acquire, you know? And that's never been a gift, but, it, well, well, you know. You do have the hint Honest? as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Give it, hand us the hint, because I have no idea. Uh, it, it is, it is part bug type, and it is, uh, it's a dual type. And um, it's an evolution, and not the base form. Okay. That has this, uh, has this qual, this trait. Oh, hmm. Do you think it could be Steelix? Bug type. No, I said uh, not bug Steelix. Type. Sorry, I I meant to say Scissor. I got my Steel types mixed up for some reason. Maybe it's Scissor. Um, go with that because I'm still just completely lost. Well, I say that because you can't exactly catch a Scissor most of the time, and so you could rename a Scyther, but you couldn't re uh, when you catch it. But you can't do that with the Scissor because it's not. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. I'm thinking Scissor. Let's do that. Uh, Scissor is unfortunately incorrect. The answer is Shedenja. Oh, because that makes the sense. way to get Shedenja get it, is yes, just to have an yes. empty slot in With your party. Slot. That makes sense. And, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so you don't actually get the chance to nickname the Shedenja. Uh, you have to take us to the name raider to do it. Uh, but close Scissor. Scissor's a good try. I mean, to be fair, it is a very forgettable Pokemon. I will not disagree with you there. <laughs> All right, so the next question is your Pokedex entry question, as always. This question is going to come to you from that Steve kid. It's Pokemon X entry reads, In the water, it tucks its limbs to become more compact. 
It tucks in its limbs to become more compact. Then it wiggles in its shell to swim fast. Who's that Pokemon? Wiggles in its shell, uh... putting its arms. And then it wiggles its shell to swim fast. <laughs> it wiggles its shell. Okay, Pokemon that have shells that have arms. Let's start with that. Um, Squirtle. <laughs> it's not Squirtle, but Squirtle. <laughs> okay, you're right. It wiggles its shell to move fast. Um, it has a shell. Um, there's Caracosta, hmm. or however, however you, I've always. Yeah, Caracosta. Um, I would definitely say it somewhat came up in a question earlier already. Huh. Mm. Mm, oh, maybe like one of those. Oh, hmm. I mean, like if you think about it, Omastar or is kind of a uh, let's or Om. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do Omastar because uh, I mean I have no idea how that or Omni. I don't know. <laughs> um. Yeah. Like because if it came up earlier, it's like well, obviously we were like dead in on the bu- on the last one, but with the rock type ones, it's like. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of shell-based uh, fossils. Is that what we say? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're going to go with Ammonite? Yeah. Ammonite or, or, is yeah. un... Or, or, or wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Well, no. What you thinking? K- uh, Kabuto? Could you repeat the Pokedex entry? In the water, it tucks in its limbs to become more compact. Then it wiggles its shell to swim fast. Uh, Kabuto. You're going to go with Kabuto? Kabuto? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm done with that. Uh, Kabuto, I will give you the points. Um, it is Kabutops. Ah. Um, but I... It's the family. It's, it's the family. I agree with this, so I'll give you the points. Um, yeah, Kabutops is the answer. The extra entry was going to be from Pokemon Leaf Green, and it reads, Its sleek shape is perfect for swimming. It slashes prey with its claws and drains their fluids. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, you guys are three for three now. Your next, eh. your next question is going to be worth up to, uh... Is going to be worth up to three points, and it's going to be from British Gent. Uh, there are technically seven answers. I will only need three of them, one point per. Uh-oh. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I am back with the bonga question. <laughs> During the events of Gold and Silver, Oak writes a letter to Gold and informs him of the seven areas of expertise a trainer can hold. What are they? I'm going to say these are oh, very Oh, because each of the characters represents one of them, right? I believe so, actually. You are correct. Uh, there are seven. Um, I will give you three strikes and you're out. Um, and, but you can just guess at what they are. Um, and if you get three, we're just going to call it. <laughs> um, yeah. I actually think I can parse through this because... Yeah, each one, I think um, one, each one... They're all things you do in Pokemon. They are. I, I want to say. Yeah, especially at that point in time. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I want to say breeding. Um, breeding. I I'm gonna give it to you. It's technically called hatching, but I'll give it to you. Yeah, that. Uh, um, is collecting all of them any, like one of the catching. catching? Capturing is one. Yes, uh, that is one. Of yeah, them. I feel like you're missing like a very uh, easy battling. one. Well, sure, battling. Battling. Yeah. Battling is also correct. That's three right. of them. Okay, uh, let's see how many we can actually get. Uh, that is, uh, I get we're, the, we're at three for three, but like... Yeah, yeah, um, you guys I think got I'm the understanding points. the question more now. Um, training or r- raising Training Pokemon? is like that, correct. Uh, training Pokemon is correct, yeah. yeah. Um, the other ones um, are a little bit harder, I think. Uh, let's the other... go with the sappy oh, okay. one. I'm going to say friendship. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to try friendship, yeah. you know. Friendship. You can't not try friendship. Friendship. You can you can solve uh, let's everything see, through friendship. Battling, training. Yes. Uh, I mean, I can just give you the answers. Um, is trading one of them? Trading is one of them. I thought so. That which is interesting. Um, I remember. I think I'm stuck after. I that, remember though. from like yeah. uh, I I remember trading specifically from the Emerald manga at the end of the Emerald manga. They're trying to set up Diamond and Pearl. Mm-hmm. Um, also, it's a very awkward time in the Pokemon manga because they kind of just like cut everybody off from the Pokemon manga from there. Um, it had been like one very continuous story up until that point. Yeah, uh, and they, uh, uh, but what they do to try to set it up is like Oak hands, um, green slash blue, the uh, the rival character, the uh, the protector for evolving right on into right period. He goes, he goes. I think this does something. I just don't know how to do it. Maybe you <laughs> can figure it out. Um, 
The the other ones that you were missing were healing and evolution. Oh, evolution. Uh, we should have yeah. got yeah, yeah evolve healing. Like, and, yeah. Uh, I don't. Care. I would not have thought. No healing. healing I yeah. didn't think you guys would get, but you guys got the point. So you are six for four now. We're back to uh, our final question, which are which is our base stat question as always. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this question from Sleeve. Which Gen Nine Pokemon has the highest base attack stat? Okay. Um. Let's see. I'm trying to. Is it an ultra, or is it um, is it a paradox? Is what I'm thinking. I thought you were asking me. I I will tell you no. No, like I'm thinking out loud. Like, is it a paradox Pokemon? Hmm. No. Um. Man, I'm having a hard. I don't think it's any of the starters, frankly. Um. No, because uh, the legendaries have 131. Um. So no. No. This is hard. Actually, um, I'm not like I know all their stats too. But I it's just not. Hmm. Oh gosh, and we already used our hit. <laughs> Oy vey. Uh. Okay. What are the ones that like really stick out to you? Like, cause I'm I'm trying to think, but Star Ledge is like 125. It's not that. It's uh not the cover legendary. Oh, you know what? Maybe Vex Caliber, the pseudo legendary. I think I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's a good choice. It's like, no, because I'm like, the cover legendaries are like 130 something, and they're just like, no, it must be higher. And I think Max Scholar's are like, I, I want to say 140, like, ish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's really good, despite its garbage typing. Yeah. Uh, because terrestrializing, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's. let's like, the do... thing is, I feel like um, Scarlet Violet had a lot more special attackers. Yeah. Um. But uh, I think Max Scalar is a physical. About, uh... so I want to. What about Iron? Just just so we think about ones. What about Iron Fist and uh, Annihilate? Uh, Iron Fist, I don't think is the highest because oh, it might be Annihilate though. That's a good point. Um, I was thinking um, Iron Fist has really high other stats as well. Um, so I don't think it has like the highest attack. Although or Iron Hands, it? I mean, right? Is it Iron Hands? Yeah, Iron? yeah. Uh, Hariyama, right? Yeah. The Sumo Hariyama. Um. No, I still think it's Bexcalibur. Okay. All right, let's do Bexcalibur. Bexcalibur is unfortunately incorrect. It is number two, though. Oh, um, gosh, what's higher? Uh, the answer is Palafin. Oh. Of course! Of Hero course. Hero Mode Paladin has a base attack stat of 160. Oh, man. Okay, That's I would, I would, I would like to apologize nasty. to everybody that was just screaming um, into the... <laughs> uh, no, you know what? They're still the newest generation. <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, Vexcalibur has a 145 at base attack stat. Oh, my God. The fact that something beats yeah, that. Yeah, very yeah, that's yeah. It's actually crazy high. Uh, it is crazy high. Yeah. But that gives you guys six points today, which is a substantial amount. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm going to sort the sheet and let you know where you stand uh, in our race to 40. Currently, we have Sublime in first place wow. with 17 points. Congratulations, um, buddy. In second Dang. place, we have a Whimsicott with 16 points. In third place, we've got Linian with 14. A basket in fourth with 12. Dang. Uh, Mark, hey. Mark and Claude tied for fifth with eight. Seth and Shark tied for seventh with seven. Jushiro uh, in ninth with six. R Sigma in tenth with five. And Shamu's definitely on the board, and so are the other people on that episode I wasn't on, but nobody told me how many points they got. Um, so... I need to find out. Oh, so someone might take your crown there. Somebody might take the crown, yeah. <laughs> we'll see, though. All right, but that is going to be it for Poke Quiz. We're going to kick it on over now to the topic. We have another review this week from iTunes from Boy Jeff. Amazing five stars. I just started listening this year, but I've loved it ever since. Well, thank you for that. And if you would like to review us wherever you listen to the podcast, we would really appreciate it. It would help us out. On top of that, you might be able to be right on the show. Well, until then, we're going to kick it on over, guys, to the topic. Welcome to the topic. I'm going to proceed to this again with beware spoilers beyond this point. Oh, yeah, for sure. We are talking about the Pokemon anime. All of the timestamps are in the show notes down below. You can skip ahead to the uh, to the poke of the episode if you don't want to hear about this. But we are going to definitely talk a lot about the latest 11 episodes of the Pokemon anime, specifically the last one that just released in Japan, 
and discuss our feelings about the Pokemon anime in general, how it ended, and all of that jazz. Because, boy, do I have feelings that I didn't think I'd have. Um, yeah, I, I thought I, like, emotionally prepared myself for the anime ending back in December when they announced it, and I could not have been more wrong. I legit thought I wasn't going to care. <laughs> I cared way more than I thought. No, there were there were a couple times where, like, I'm not even kidding you, like, just, like, the teeniest lump started to form, and I was like, no, no, suppress it, you're a man. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a Pokemon anime. <laughs> Something like this doesn't happen every day, though, like, we're a franchise, well, not a franchise. I mean, truly, I mean, 25 years to make a move like that. 26, 26, actually, which is even longer, but yeah, I absolutely agree, the sentiment's the same. That's insane. Like, tw 26 years and being like, mm, yeah, we need to get rid of that main character. And it's just like, ah, okay, I guess you could do that. I think I think this is the best thing that could happen, honestly, because and this is this is a hope for me from me real quick. Um, I hope that with every new uh, like Pokemon generation game, uh, they come out with they have a new uh, protagonist and a new group of people that are doing it. Because to me, like there were aspects of Ash's like, you know, journey through the different uh, like leagues and everything because that I liked because that's what I was doing, right? Like I was the continual main character throughout my playthroughs. At least that's how I always played my games. Um, and, uh, um, so I guess I liked that aspect, but I also really like the idea of like everybody getting to, um, uh, feel more included by just like the idea that, you know, Ash isn't the main character, you know, like different people doing different things. Um, different personalities. Well, one thing I was thinking about is the fact that, like, oh gosh, there's no more Ash. But also, there's like how many episodes starring Ash? Like, if you want to go watch Ash Catch Eight Badges, go do that in one of like the six other franchises you can choose for it. You know, like I, I absolutely, I kind of actually agree with you. That's Sabrina. not going anywhere. I definitely feel that. I, I don't know. It's also kind of weird because it was one of those things that just felt like a constant in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, it's literally been in our lives since we were like small kids. Yeah, like eight, right? And uh, I just, I just think to myself, like, oh man, the fact that Ash is gone is very, it's very strange. It's like saying goodbye to a friend. But for me, I, I feel like it's more hitting me that Team Rocket is gone. No, that too. Like, I mean, both of them are big characters, and they actually, I mean, they gave Team Rocket kind of the same nod that they gave to Ash at the end as well. As well, they deserve. I definitely agree. Yeah. I'm also like way happier with that than what I saw on Twitter, where they're just like, oh, they're gonna quit Team Rocket and. At the end of the episode, you just see them in the balloon doing the same old, same old. Yeah. Well, you know what? I hope they find happiness because they deserve. I well, I just thought that was wonderful. Like that's just such a good ending. Yeah. I, I like that better than them ending their arc. You know what I mean? Where we've kind of come to a place where Ash didn't really end. Like the anime with Ash didn't really end. It's just he's on to another adventure. Like the last shot is like and off to another one, which like yeah, yeah. But that's what it's always been. So like keep going. We don't need to keep seeing it. Exactly. Pretty much. That was one of the parts that 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 like uh, choked me up a little. Was like when he when he was just like I don't remember exactly what he said, but like well, all right, where are we going to start our adventure? What are we? Where are we going now? And then he throws up the the stick. Yeah. Although you know what I wish they would have paid off was the ho oh. I, I do wish they would have put ho -Oh. I I do think it was very cool for them to nod to Pidgeot at the, uh, in that episode as well. The Pidgeot! Oh my god, I loved it so much. That, that, that got me in the feels, where he actually came back! Oh. Yeah, he came back for none of his other Pokemon, except for Pidgeot. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he would, though. He said he would to the Pidgeot. And there's 11 episodes. Well, I think he said he would also, like, come back for Primeape and come back for, like, a number of Pokemon that he just never came back. But Pidgeot, I think if you're going to choose one of the Pokemon that he gave away over the years. You know what the greatest irony is almost is if they did continue Ash, he could go get his Primeape and make it an Annihilate. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, what a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it's a very, I, I think I thought the send off was like pretty decent, though. Like, a yeah. lot of people were kind of complaining about how it felt like nothing, and I'm like, I think that's how it has to be, though. Like, I can't... Yeah, well, you can't have something big. He already did that! He already won! I know, he already the, won. The ultimate tournament! Like... I can't imagine a time where you would end it, and you would you would just be like, yeah, Ash is just done doing his thing. So is Team Rocket. We're all done. And I'm just like, they're just not. Like, uh, well, I, I think the biggest thing was the shoes for me. 
why is that? Well, let me let me let me uh, uh, finish the uh, the stick thing, right? Because for me, yeah, yeah. like, oh, yeah, finish the stick thing. I read, I read, I read like way too much into it. Like, uh, <laughs> it was, it, it was, it was, it was like actually like kind of emotional for me because like so many, so many throws it up right and then it hits the ground. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I mean, like, like to me, it, it made me feel like, uh, um, uh, the, like the Pokemon world is like so great because, um, like anywhere you go. Anything you do, no matter who you're with or who you're following or anything like that, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> it's going to be great. Like, and I felt like, uh, I don't know. I just thought that was like so freeing. Just, you know, where am I going to go? All right. I'm going to have a blast over here. You know? Yeah. The, the shoes did two things for me. Um, one, Ash's new pair of shoes has the same logo as the hair clip that Liko has. Um, so we've confirmed that that's not an Orbeetle reference, but rather a Pokemon League reference um in her hair clip which at least t- to me like gives me a sense of comfort that this the new anime is taking place probably in the same universe mm-hmm. which is nice like that's a comforting feeling right that there's going to be like some like some clinging to the past um as an old man <laughs> the thing that i uh also really like is it, it's just like very symbolic right um he he wore he wore his shoes out and he says, I need new shoes. And it's kind of exactly what's happening to, like, the Pokemon franchise right now, right? Um, you Ash went on this adventure. He wore out his shoes. He put on some new ones. We're doing the same thing with the Pokemon franchise. We're putting on new shoes. We're going to go do something different. We're going to move on to the next stage of our life. Man, I did not think about that. Yeah. It was, it was very symbolic. Like, I read into it way too far, probably. But <laughs> it felt very symbolic. I mean, why else would they focus on the shoes, right? Yeah, yeah. For me, it was... For the tie into the design. I mean, the tie into the design I thought was very nice. I mean, it was a little bit comforting to me, like I said, because of the the tie into the other anime. Like, a very subtle nod that, like, this is in the same universe. Yeah, I appreciate that both of the new protagonists have, like, some element of their design tied back to Ash. Yes. Um, I mean, we, I kinda, we need that to some extent. I don't think we're going to get the thing where it's like, Liko is Ash's daughter, or Roy is Ash's son. I think we will get uh, some definite nods. To Ash existing. P- Captain Pikachu is Pikachu's son. Please, <laughs> please, please don't ever, ever, ever <laughs> sexualize Ash Ketchum. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, I think, like, I, I think that uh, we're definitely going to get, um, I, I don't know, Captain Pikachu, I, I don't know that Captain Pikachu can carry the weight of what was Ash's Pikachu, who is do- whose back must hurt. I mean, I don't think it's trying to be the same thing. Yeah. Oh, absolutely not. It, yeah, Captain Pikachu is a side character, which... I think is kind of nice at the same time as not nice. I don't know. Like the, the problem to me is like Ash and Pikachu are like a safety blanket, right? Like I, I always felt like they're always going to be there. Which is, I think I'm glad that there's still a Pikachu in like the main. Cast. Oh, I think, I think you couldn't get rid of it. Like even when, the, when this was announced, I'm like, there's no way that there's not a Pikachu that shows up, right? Yeah. There's just no way. Um, and they found a great way. So I appreciate that they even made it distinct, like different. Like it's not the same Pikachu. It's not Ash's Pikachu. It is not the same Captain Pikachu, Pikachu which I like. Yeah, it is Captain Pikachu, and it'll be a different personality, and that's going to be very interesting. Yeah, I hope so. I I really want to see the personality. I do really want to see the personality of Captain Pikachu. I I would love to see how much different it is. I mean, in the poses, you can kind of see that it's different. I agree with the hat. I am a little concerned, though, but I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. My my only concern is that uh, Pokemon's been trying to push this model lately where, like, everybody only has, like, one partner Pokemon that they hang out with the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I miss the days where, like, we are all we all have a team of Pokemon, right? Or at least a couple Pokemon that, like, we use um, in the Pokemon universe because they introduced, like, uh, several new characters as well on top of Freed and Liko and Roy um, that hang out with Professor Freed. Uh, let me see if I can pull them up. But they uh, they all have like one partner Pokemon instead of having several Pokemon. Um, and I, I would like to see a world where maybe we get a couple more Pokemon. That's all. <laughs> I mean, that, that's my only thing. Uh, but I, I, I could be the only one that feels like this. Well, also, like, it hasn't come out yet. So we'll see. Maybe they'll all have several. So Yeah, maybe they'll all have several. I, I hope that Liko and Roy at least catch more than just like Fue Coco and Sprigatito. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing a gym challenge. And if they're both protagonists, you kind of have to balance it. Are they going to do gym challenges? Like, I don't know. I mean, I assume they're going to do everything in Paldea. Like, well, so it's not. It's, so they've confirmed that the new series isn't just in Paldea. It's like the whole Pokemon world, like Journeys was all over again. 
Oh, okay. Oh, God. I didn't know They're that. doing that again, which I think is... I, I think that might be one of the bigger issues, if that makes sense. Like, um, that you're no longer... That, like, they're just doing Pokemon Journeys again, but with different characters. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how I feel about that, honestly, because the, the only tie-in that we have to Paldea is that Liko is from Paldea. We know this. And then Roy is from Kanto. And then they both start hanging out with Professor Freed. Uh, Roy's got this weird Pokeball that's not the GS ball. It's a different Pokeball. I assume they're going to spend a fair amount of time in um, Paldea, though, because isn't Arvin going to be in it? I don't know if Arvin's been confirmed or not, but uh, the thing that we do know is that Liko also has a crystal, which is definitely the Terra Jewel that you see on all of the hats. Um, but also on the back of the uh, the Indigo Turtle, I forget his name off the top of my head, but um, from the DLC, it's that same gem that's in the center of his shell. Um, and we also in the trailer get uh, definitely a terrestrialized shiny Rayquaza. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so there's definitely ties to the Paldia storyline that are gonna be that are gonna be involved here. I I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but uh, there's gonna definitely there's definitely gonna be some pretty interesting things in terms of plot at least i think yeah and i think uh maybe severing times with ash at this point will just give them more creative freedom to explore different kinds of stories to tell well to be fair i also think they've been trying to detach for a while yeah you can kind of feel it ever since they switched to the movies where ash isn't is like a different universe ash i mean i think it even started as far back as sun and moon uh, oh that's that's about the same time because that was like the Marshadow movie, right? I can't remember, but uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, the anime went through a very dramatic art change, but the movies didn't. Um, or the movies still had their, you know, more. Yeah, they still had the they still had the most tra- more traditional style, which I think they were trying to be more expressive. Yeah, I I definitely think they feel felt pigeonholed by Ash, which I don't blame them. And so it's like, even with that, I think they really did try to explore different kinds of storytelling with Ash um, the last couple of generations, um, instead of him doing like a Galar Pokemon, uh, you know, eight badge, go get him. Like, you're having a whole, the journeys thing, right? So Yep. And to be fair, the badges also were like lackluster in design, and I would also argue that for Paul Diaz. But they, uh, yeah, I, I think it was very interesting the direction they took it with ash and they definitely just like wrapped up his storyline and they're like yeah we're done i mean i think the fact that they let him win that tournament was like the perfect uh capstone it absolutely was though it absolutely was i i think they did a great job the with the way they did it man that episode actually where um the episode where ash actually wins it it felt like the like the end of the anime like it felt like it um and the fact that they announced the end of the anime like right after that kind of felt right it made sense it, yeah i agree like, I think we all felt, like, very strong feelings emotionally because of how long it's been in our lives and how much it shaped, like, was a part of our childhood. Yes. And thus, like, it's been with us our entire lives. But also, like, um, as you said about, like, we're all entering new chapters in our lives at the same time. And, like, mm-hmm. a- Ash has pretty much done everything there is to do. Like, why not give it to someone new? Like I said, I think it was very fitting that they just kind of let him keep yeah. on keeping on. That's where we left him. And that's true to his character, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, also, okay, Ash as a character is very has was very good. I think. Yes, and I really do love that. Over literally decades, you got to see that character development. Like you, he went from being a bumbling trainer to like eccentric to an expert trainer that helps new people on their journey. Like it was a really great evolution to literally to see over the course of our entire lives. I don't disagree with that. I also just think that like. I don't know, like, he's he's just a very, he was a very good role model the entire time. Like, he wasn't, g- he was a bumbling trainer, but he always kept going, no matter the setback, right? Like, you even, you look at, uh... He's Rudy. Kind of, actually. <laughs> a- except he actually succeeded at, at his sport. <laughs> hey, Rudy had that touchdown. It reminds me all the time when, like, in that opening, in the opening sequence during the original intro song, right? Where, like, Ash is sad after he lo- lo- it only gets the top 16 in the Indigo League um it he just he keeps going he doesn't stop yeah and he progressively got uh better every league he went to <laughs> uh i think he made a step back at, at one point one time he made a step bad i think it went from top four to top eight once right yeah i think it was i think it was the one that we can all think of and i think the answer is unova but is it the one with the dark rye so he made it to the top four in sino that was the one with the dark rye. yes he did okay right Ugh. that was the top four yeah, but the, uh, all that matters is that he beat Paul in that one. Yes, that's all that matters. I mean, it's kind of like how at the end of 
if uh, Johto, he beat Gary, like, that's all that mattered. We didn't care if he actually won, right? <laughs> the important thing is you beat Gary. <laughs> you beat Gary. You beat Gary. Like, that was the real win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the way that he lost in Johto as well was also kind of fitting because he like lost to Harrison who had the uh, who had the Blaziken. Yeah, and he was just like, "Oh, this is setting up my next adventure, and like I need to move on to this next adventure," and which, which is just great. It's just great all around. Uh, they they handled it all very well because uh, yeah, um, yeah, the one where he pr- regressed was actually yep, yeah, it was Unova because um, he did top sixteen Indigo League. He won the Orange Islands because that was a one-off thing. That's the Orange Islands. The Orange Islands is still a very fun memory for me. Like, it was an awkward season. It was still very fun. I agree. It was really fun. It was, honestly, it's kind of a precursor to, like, Trials. Um, Yeah, actually, you're right. You are right. I would love for us to be able to have some kind of... I remember the race with Lapras. I would love for that to come to the game some in some way, where we had to do something more like that, but... Uh, I guess I guess we kind of did c- get that in Scarlet and Violet. Like I would say the gym trials for Scarlet and Violet. Yeah, and also in Sun and Moon, of course. But yeah, I think they were very close in Scarlet and Violet. I agree. Uh, additionally, so yeah, then he got uh, top eight in Mount Sil at uh, Johto at the Mount Sil- Silver Conference, and then top eight again in Hoenn, where I guess he didn't really have like a person to beat. There were multiple rivals, but none that were like. One that was irksome the way Paul is, of course. And then Sinnoh, he becomes the top four champ. He gets top four, um, loses to Darkrai. Uh, then uh, Unova happened, and we all forgot. <laughs> and he got top eight. And then Kalos, he got to- he got second place because he lost to Elaine because we brought in Elaine for reasons. Yeah. And then he won Alola, and then it set him up to win like the Festival of Champions. Yes. So he did. Uh, it-, it was. It was definitely an interesting career. Yeah, he, I mean, he basically progressively got better uh, on the whole, which is, yeah. With the exception of Unova, which we can all forget exists. Uh, like, those three seasons just didn't need. With the exception of him. They were a little weird. With the exception of him capping Stivey. That's true. I, I can't think of any other Pokemon from that time frame that are memorable. Maybe Oshawott. I did enjoy uh, Silent and Iris uh, as, like, foils with each other. That's That's fair. A little bit, just a little bit. I can remember like three Pokemon that he got um, from there because, like, he well, he obviously got all three starters. Well, he rotated a lot, which was kind of interesting to say. Uh, he had a crocodile, yeah. He did catch like the random Pokemon that season, kind of like he did in, in Gen One, where he just caught the random Pokemon and he cycled them out. But he would cycle them more frequently. He caught Crocodile, Palpitoad, Palpitoad, Bulldor was a weird one. Uh, Lee Vanny, he got Scraggy, which was kind of cool. Scraggy's like. One of the best Gen 5 Pokemon. Yeah, Scraggy's great. Love Scraggy. Yeah, I love Scraggy. Uh, unfortunately, on Pheasant. I mean, we had to. We were contractually obligated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also Gudra and Noivern. Oh, no, I'm thinking ahead. No, that's that's also the season where Charizard came back. Yeah, which was great. Which I Honestly, honestly, it was great to see that the anime doesn't, like, pause time like it does with Ash's Age. Um, and yeah. And it, it just, like... it. Things did happen. Like Charizard did train at Terrific Valley, and then it came back. Right, it, it finally finished his training, and then it came back. Charizard was just around, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah, which is just a cool thing to have happen. I wish it could have happened with Squirtle. Yeah, and it's also been nice to see how many of his Pokemon come back uh, towards the end as well. For like, oh, we get to just see how they all are. Yeah, we got to see how the big ones were at least. Like, we got to see Squirtle at the last eleven episodes, which I thought was nice. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I still wanted to go like be part of the fire brigade or whatever. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really waiting for those episodes to like hit the dub, which I think they will soon. Oh, or how about the fact that there was a Charmander in the last episode that he helps out? That's true. That was like, oh, what a great bookend! What a great bookend! <laughs> well, that was his. Uh, well, his original choice was, I believe, Squirtle. Um, and then he chose, then he chose Bulbasaur, then he chose Charmander, and then he got Pikachu. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was just. Uh, I don't know. It was a good capstone. Like the episode was a good capstone. I felt I felt good. I felt okay. I mean, it was bittersweet. I also love that. I have to love that uh, Gary has always been like a constant the entire time. Well, Gary came back at the last episode. I was like, "Have you been?" A po- have you- and if you want to talk about, hey, did you become? Yeah, he asked Ash, like, "Did you become a Pokemon master now that you're like the champion of champions?" Um, yeah, but like Gary uh, only comes in occasionally after his own arcs. But like, what a evolution of a character that had been so successfully as well yeah i they just these last 11 episodes kind of knocked it out of the park like they've completed their arcs like let they've truly 
you know, fully come into their like final evolution, so to speak, of character development. Um, yeah, and it's beautiful to see, and it's glad that I'm so glad that we got it. But because we've already gotten it, like, yeah, let's get something new. And I like I, I've been accepting it a lot better than I thought I would when I think about it. It's like, yeah, they did that. It took them 25 years. I think they've done literally everything they could possibly want to do with it. You're absolutely correct. I think. Well, one, this conversation has been very cathartic. Yeah, but also I think. Uh, I think that them giving us those last 11 episodes gave it time to like process. I don't know. And the, and the 11 episodes were all a celebration. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It was all a celebration. Victory lap. Yeah. I, I thought it was very good in that, in that regard, but I don't know. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, it's like bittersweet to see him go after 26 years. It's, it's definitely like an old friend that's just no longer there for you outside of reruns, but <laughs> <laughs> But the Pokemon but, TV app still shows the episodes, so you can still watch them over there. It's an old friend that left, but like you're happy for him, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, he moved away for his dream job or something. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, he's like leaving you to go do his dr- dream job. Yeah, that's exactly how it feels. It's it's one of those things where you feel okay seeing them go because you know it's good for them. Yeah, yeah. So the the shoes they're happy what they're doing. I want to go back to the shoes thing because oh like, oh yeah yeah. I, so um when when I was watching it um. I don't know if I missed something or, or what, but it seemed to me like, uh, Ash just like told his mom that he was going to be gone forever again by just leaving behind his shoes. Like that's, that was my initial like take from what was going on with the shoes. So I was like, <laughs> I don't know. It was just funny. It, it makes, it made me think of like all the times my mom would be like, uh, you know, this house isn't a hotel, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> but he's just leaving his dirty shoes and going off again for forever. <laughs> I hope she has a very good relationship with Professor Oak, because ain't nobody spent time with her. She's there by herself. (laughs) Her husband never came back. Ash stops by when he feel like it. (laughs) Talk talk about unanswered questions, though, from those last 11 episodes. Yeah. Why did we not find out who Ash's dad was? Like, there were references to it more than once. Yeah, but you know what? I'm glad we don't. Like, leave that as a, he doesn't need it. Who cares who his dad was? First episode of uh first episode of the new anime we're gonna find out freeds is dead hmm. that's captain pikachu captain pikachu oh my gosh da- captain pikachu <laughs> was ash's dad all along it was ash's dad's uh, pokemon no. it's just so yeah. s- it, it, it's just perfect it works out it comes full circle <laughs> it's one of those absolutely stupid things that shouldn't happen but they're probably gonna make happen for no reason so speaking of missed opportunities um so at the very end they had the rainbow which reminded me of ho-oh I had just said, it's literally in the title of the episode. It's like, and y'all didn't do the hoe. And y'all didn't do the hoe. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. We're stuck in the GS ball. I'm cool with the idea of them not doing the hoe. Like, more than I, like, the more I thought about it. Because, um, it's like, I don't know. I feel like that, like, it would be, it would be a callback, but that's like the only thing it would be. It wouldn't really seem like. Well, they, they kind of already did it once, too. They kind of already did it. I think twice, actually. Like it was the reason he went to it was one of the reasons he went to Johto. And then at the end of the Johto arc, they had Ho flying to like Hoenn or something, so he decided to do it that time too. You know what would have been really cool? Actually, I think it's better that they didn't include it because it le- leaves this episode kind of like timeless. It gives it a timelessness uh yeah. that giving the Ho uh or like calling back to the Ho would not. Yeah, the only yeah, the only thing that I uh would have thought would have been like another way to do it and I I do think that this was the best way for them to do it, but um uh if they would have had you know, maybe a Pokemon that could have, uh, from the new gen that, you know, Ash hasn't seen or anything. I was thinking the same thing. Like what? No, not even the current. Like what if he actually saw something that we had never seen before? Oh, if we would have seen, if we would have seen like a gen 10 mon or like a DLC mon. Yes. The same way he sees Ho-Oh in the pilot. But again, I think that would make it too like marked in time. Yeah. No. Yeah. I agree with you. Whereas I think him just going without anything is much more timeless. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, I was I was thinking that it would be cooler to um, have a new Pokemon do that. And then when you said when you said the timeless thing, when you said the timeless thing, I was like, oh, okay, all right, no, he's right. No, but I was wishing for the same thing as you were because it would have been cool. But I'm glad they did it the way they did. I was kind of wondering if they would end it with him just like battling Ho or something. Finally, at the end, mm-hmm. but I think the way they did it was I don't know. It just felt more peaceful. Oh, well, so, like, one of my favorite moments from, like, the last seven episodes, or 11 episodes, was the first episode of the last 11, um, where uh, Ash and Pikachu are just, like, being buds, figuring out which way to go to go hang out, mm-hmm. 
and it's essentially like in the same place where they were at the end of the last episode. Um, and then they decide to like throw the stick in the air, right? Mm-hmm. They don't know which way to go, and so they're just messing around, and they just just run one way instead of the other. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like this really like wholesome moment where these two guys are being friends. And so I don't know, it felt kind of like a callback to the beginning of the eleven episode arc. Um, to be like, yeah, he's just hanging yeah, out. Yeah, bookend it. it. It was such a perfect end. It was a perfect ending. I, I don't, yeah. like, in retrospect, like, at first I was like, why wasn't it more grand? And look, looking at it now, I'm just like, it's, I think that was perfect. Like, he's he's still doing it, what he's doing, and we don't need to do anything super crazy. Yeah. Ash is still out there kicking it, doing his thing. We're just not there to watch him, and that's okay. With the Pidgeot. With Pidgeot. He came back for Pidgeot. Uh, yeah. I, that, God, that got me, man. Yeah, the Pidgeot. Like, wow. The yeah. fact that they did it at the last episode, they, they did it on purpose. They waited for the last episode of that 11. Yeah, of course. Gosh. Because they're like, How, we are going to make this, we're going to make it as long as possible. <laughs> it was, uh, um, so I actually laughed out loud when I saw Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> With the Venomoth, okay. Yeah, with the Venomoth. Moving on up. Yeah, I know. I, I even looked up, like, right after I finished the episode, I looked up the episode count <laughs> the last time we saw Tracy. <laughs> or sorry, not the last time. I, I I can't remember if it was the last time, but when he was first introduced, um, it was, like, at least, like, a little over, like, 1,100 episodes. That's where he was introduced, and that's, like, when he left. Yeah, yeah. And so it was just hilarious to me that after, like, <laughs> 1,100 episodes... Um, uh, he's just there for a second. He's like, he's like, Ash, look at this. It's like Venomoth. And then it's like, oh, okay. So for 1100 episodes, this is what you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, Tracy's such an awkward character. He's such, he's such an aw- awkward character. I assume he did some great sketches. Although to be, f- yeah, he is, but he was part of like the first generation of like the Pokemon anime. That's true. In a way that we all know Tracy, right? Like we all are familiar with. Tracy. I, I think I, I think I brought this up last week, but like one of the things that I'm gonna miss about with leaving Ash is not just leaving Ash, but leaving the awkward history that Pokemon's had, which has kind of been preserved in the anime because it's baked in stuff like Tracy, right? Where where Tracy existed because they wanted to find somebody who might be more universally likable than Brock. Boy, did they get that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And then they just pawn Tracy off on Professor Oak. And then we get like, we, you know, like we get references to things like the orange. It's like, come back, Brock. We need you. There's references to things like the Orange Islands, right? Because Ash won the league there. And like, just like the awkward history of Pokemon. Um, the purple Kecleon, right? I, I really just, I, I see those things and I'm like, man, we're going to leave Ash. And then we're kind of, kind of get this like very perfect marketable version of Pokemon that they've been able to craft over 26 years. And I just want... I don't know. I kind of like the little imperfections that we had along the way. And to to see those go make me a little sad. But it, it is what it is. Yeah, and I don't see that it's going anywhere. It's just like, like you said, like a new generation. Kind of. Well, I, I can't see a world in which you go and visit other regions. And when you go to Kanto, you don't see hi to Professor Oak. And then it turns out to be the same Professor yeah. Oak that we've known and love. Right. If it's in multiple regions, I'm excited to see actually other characters that we've seen before. With new characters. It kind of reminds me of Pokemon Chronicles a little bit. A little bit, yeah. It almost reminds me of a requel, um, like a movie. Co- like, like, oh, we're getting new characters, but like, everyone else is still there, you know? Like, if we're going to other places, we might see the same characters. And this time, we'll get to see them in a new context, which is almost exciting, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see if we'll... If somebody will just, like, bump into Brock and Misty, right? Right, exactly. How amazing would that be? Yeah. I would be I would be here for that, right? Where If they, like, went to Kanto and maybe he's just like, I'm going to take on... Roy's like, I'm going to take on the pewter gym. And on that note, like, the anime may be over, but that doesn't mean we've seen the last of anyone. No, that's true, too. I, I think there's room, like we said at the beginning, like, that Ash could show up in the movies or something. Um, Even then, I still think... There's no way that Ash doesn't show up in this anime if it's in the same universe at some point. I think he might not just because they don't want like his legacy to overshadow it. I well, I don't think they do it right away. I I think they do it like a hundred some episodes in. Oh, I think it'll be more than that if it happens. I would I would love to see if they go back. I would love to see a time skip. I would love to see you know Gary's taken over. Um, uh, the uh, Professor Oak. Professor Oaks. Oh God, that'd be crazy. Uh, like. I don't know, maybe um, uh, Ash is a uh, um, gym leader or something now, or I don't know. I think it would be cool, you know, or uh, um, Ash is the, you know, Kanto 
champion or whatever, and he's just there he's chilling. the Pokemon League president. Because literally, if you watch the uh, the old Pokemon League episodes, uh, and you look at the Pokemon League president, like that little short guy, I forget what his name was. Um, he he's literally Ash, just old. Um, he's he's got a backward hat on. He's wearing tennis shoes. He's just hanging out. <laughs> Perfect. It was Ash all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I need to find the. Uh, Watch that have been his father. His name was uh, Charles Goodshow. That was his name. <laughs> <laughs> Not Mr. Remarkable. Charles Goodshow. I love that. Yeah, he was around until the end of Diamond and Pearl. Oh, and uh, um, I loved uh, <laughs> I loved that uh, Jesse and James and Meowth were serving tables. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I thought that was pretty great. I, I really like the ending for them. I still like the ending for them, where it's just like, they're just going to keep on doing their thing. To this day, actually, my favorite episode of the anime is Go West, Young Meowth. Like, I really think they're the heart of the show. Because they're the only truly constant characters, because Ash's companions change. Aside from Pikachu, all his Pokemon change. You are correct. Team Rocket is the heart of the show. No, the five of them are the heart of the show. Like, Ash, Pikachu, Jesse, James, and Meowth. And right? Team Rocket, because even, like, his, Ash's companions get switched out. Well, it's another reason why Team Unova Rocket was a- has been the constant. Yeah. It's another reason why Unova was such an awkward season. Because in Unova... They like Team Rocket took like a hard backseat. Took a level in badass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, they took. Well, they also took like a hard backseat, and they weren't in every episode. They were not. Although they were also much more competent as a they. Threat. They were. They were. Which was fun to see. Yeah, it was fun to see, but it was like really. It was. It was interesting. I don't know. It was, it was just very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had to have our moment. Yeah. God. Yeah. Ugh, Team Rocket. I, I'm gonna miss Team Rocket more than anything. I would be okay if the anime started and it's like Roy or Lico, and they're like. You know how you know how the anime started, where Ash is like watching this like really hardcore Pokemon battle. Yeah, it's the same battle that you see when you start the first games. It started the Game Boy. Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't it be cool though if like it starts with like Liko and Roy, and then like they like, see Ash beating Leon. That would be really cool. That would be really cool. That like it's on TV, and they see that, and then then we get the adventure, and we're like, cool. We establish the same universe. They're going on an adventure. It's oh, be that would be incredible. You're right. I think I like that would be the perfect start, in my opinion. Like that would be one of the most perfect starts you could have. But yeah, it, it's a good time. Uh, I think these are all my thoughts. Uh, I could go on probably forever, just like in a circle. But I, I think I've gotten my thoughts out. Yeah, I think like one last thing. Uh, when I first started watching the episode, I felt like everything was like really rushed. You know, it it all felt like everything yeah. was happening too fast, especially when they did that little montage. Uh, the one where uh Tracy showed up for like a split second. I was like, okay, all right, so. We're just like running through everything right now, aren't we? Like, I feel like we put this on fast forward. There's no good way to wrap up, you know, 26 years. No, I mean, you're, you're, you're totally right. But, uh, I felt like, um, uh, after the montage it, and the Charmander thing, I felt like it did start to slow down a bit. And that was good. Like to get some time with just mm-hmm. him and Pikachu for a minute, you know? I wish him the best at his yeah. new job. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I think that's everything that I had. Yeah. Me too. I, I brought up it up a little earlier, but just one last thing is the fact that the anime Ash's Pikachu is the reason that Pikachu is the icon that it is today. It is true. Um, I don't think it would be without the anime for sure. Yeah. They did it on purpose. Granted, they did it on purpose. But... Sure. But like, what a success. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It did very well. I, I'm a little concerned if Pikachu's still going to be the mascot. I, it is. Yeah. But I, I think it's kind of been cemented, cemented in, and that's why Captain Pikachu exists. But. And that'll be its legacy. And that's why they can retire it, because, like, well, obviously mm-hmm. that's not why, but, like, they did it. Like, Pikachu is cemented as the mascot, thanks to Ash's Pikachu. I don't want to use the word retire. I would rather just be like, I don't want to say this. I don't want to say this is goodbye. I just want to say this is see you later. Sure. And the legacy stands. Like, the legacy stands. Yeah, because, like, I still think there's a chance they show up somehow, some way. Um and I mean, they'll always have them in their time. back pocket. They'll always have them in their back pocket. So, so this is me being like very much a like a pessimist. Is things start to go poorly with the new anime? Things aren't going as well. They just like play the Ash card, and he just shows up again. <laughs> you know, like I, I could see that happen. But yeah, all right, yeah, I think we can end it here. Uh, those are my feelings. If you have feelings, which I'm sure a lot of you do, <laughs> please send them into the mailbag. At pucklepodcast at gmail.com. I will unfortunately not be on next week's show to read them, but I I will read them all. <laughs> I will read them all to see how you guys are. I believe there's going to be a special episode next week for you guys in in uh, return for that. So definitely check that out. But yeah, thanks for listening. We're going to kick it on over now to the Pokemon. 
of the episode. We'll catch you on the flip flop. <laughs> episode <laughs> welcome to the pokemon of the episode our pokemon of the episode this week is national dex number 983 king gambit the big blade pokemon though it commands a massive army in battle it's not skilled at devising complex strategies it just uses brute strength to keep pushing <laughs> that's cute <laughs> yeah it's got big blade energy as i was saying yeah big blade energy <laughs> I love the picture for the Poke the Pokedex entry pictures in Scarlet and Violet are one of my favorite things. Oh, I love them. Love because them so the much. Because the pose is just a bunch of little pawn yards and like two fish are <laughs> sitting around it. Yeah. Like, yeah, we got this. They're so good for storytelling. Yeah. Yeah, they're so cute. I they've done a really good job on like Pokemon lore in the Pokedex here. Agree. They've been killing it lately, like several generations in a row. Yes. I honestly, since Gen 7, I think Pokedex has been like really good yeah agree like gen 6 pokedex has been like sta- w- up until then it was like standard pokedex like you you read it in dexter's voice sure. and you get disappointed but the rest of them now are just like we have some pretty cool entries they really stories. use it to tell the story of yeah. the world it's really been great yeah they do a, they do world building which is fantastic nice like the skarmory uh bit in uh yes. galar was so good like right stuff like that yes but yeah, we got King Gambit. King Gambit's a really good Pokemon. Uh, it's got two things going for it. One, it's got this ability called Supreme Overlord. Uh, Supreme Overlord it gives you a 10% increase to the power of the moves for itself and each of the moves for every Pokemon that has fainted during the battle. So if you're playing 6v6, you can get like a 50% increase, um, which is kind of insane in terms of power. On top of that, it has a, mo- a signature move in Kauto Cleave. Um, which is, uh, an attack that, uh, deal, it has a base pa- power of 85, which is pretty good for a dark type move, honestly, but it, uh, it bypasses accuracy checks. Like it's, it's just a great move. It, it's just very good. So it, it's, it's just, uh, it's doing its thing, having a good time. Um, I mean, base a- HP of 100, base attack of 135, which is very high. Considering that uh, Baxcalibur is 145. Yeah. Uh, base defense of 120. Uh, special attack, who cares? It's 60. Um, special defense, 85. That's not terrible, honestly. Uh, uh, base speed of 50, which is a little slow, but yeah. But it's pretty good. Like it, it, I mean, the move pool isn't super deep, but it's deep enough. Yeah. I mean, the type is good, also. Mm-hmm. I mean, it gives it some quad weaknesses, but... Most things are good with steel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steel steel is just good with most things. I mean, it's yeah. only got four weaknesses, fire, ground, and fighting. Like, those are the only weaknesses it has. It also has at least two immunities. Two immunities, now, yeah. yeah, in psychic and poison. Sometimes. And it is resisted by uh, how many types? It looks like uh, most things. nine. Most nine. things. <laughs> it resists normal flying rock, ghost, steel, grass, ice, dragon, and dark. So, so crazy. It's steel's just a good it's steel mix it with like most types is usually pretty good that's why steel fairy is one of the best types in the game um like steel fairy is absolutely nuts and i'm so happy that we nasty. Didn't get a, especially because it just erases a weakness that is just so nasty a weakness of for a pokemon type that only has like two <laughs> two yeah it's yeah it neutralizes one, but the fact that you yeah. erase one, period, yeah, I know. is it's just, just... It's just disgusting. Disgustingly good. I'm so glad that Tinkaton isn't good. It's gen. good enough for just how good the type is. No, I agree with that. That is, a, like, that, yeah. that is how... I'm so happy that Tinkaton is not oppressive. I am so happy about this. Like, Zacian was so bad. Um, it's the reason... Me- and Mega... Mega, Mile, Mega uh, Mile, got, Mawile before it. And Mega yeah, Mawile before it. Yeah, Mega Mile. Magirna. Like, there's Ugh. so many Pokemon yeah. that had this type. Name that a were bad depressing. fairy steel. Like, even Klefki is, like, really good at what yeah, it does. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, we've got a uh, we've got a team for this. It's for OU. Um, it actually looks pretty fun. It does not have Walking Wake on it. But, uh, <laughs> uh, hey, if you wanted a break, here's your chance. Yeah, if you don't want to use Walking Wake, uh, we have a team for you. They're all doing, I think these are all doing essentially their standard thing. Um, the only difference is there isn't a, a great tusk on the team, but uh, that's for good reason. And you'll see why. But we'll let uh, we'll let Basket start with uh, King Gambit. All right. So King Gambit, we've got um, 
holding the black glasses, Supreme Overlord, because that's what he is. I mean, um, that's just the best ability for it. It really is. Yes. And you're terror typing into dark. Then you've got um, 252 attack, 4 defense, and 252 speed. Adamant nature. And we're going in with Kowtow Cleave, Swords Dance, Iron Head, and Sucker Punch. Um, do you guys happen to know, like, why there's 252 speed on a base 50 speed Pokemon? So you can go as fast as you possibly can. I mean, that's what to I was To beat thinking. other slow stuff. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. There we are. I'd love to use this in Trick Room in, like, VR, the, or in um, VGC, though. Yes. It would be okay in v Trick Room in VGC. You are correct. Yeah. Uh, take the next one, Basket. Take your other one. So we've got Dragonite with the heavy duty boots. Ability multi scale because it's awesome. Terra typing normal because uh, extreme speed. And then we've got EVs uh, 152 HP, 252 attack, 104 speed. And Adamant Nature with Dragon Dance, Roost, Earthquake, and extreme speed. Normal type, extreme speed. You know what you're here for. <laughs> Dragonite is a really good example of why Terra-type is actually kind of healthy. I love Terra-type. It's been my favorite since Megas as a uh, mechanic. Oh, absolutely. I think I think it's Megas and Terrestrialization for me. Followed, I, I'm going to say followed by Dynamax because I think I had more fun with it than I did Z-moves ever. Dynamax was definitely a spectacle. Dynamax made me happy in t because of the strategy it allowed for in VGC. Um, you could do some fun shenanigans because you were boosting your, you were also like boosting your partner and stuff like that. Mm hmm. Yeah, the also, Dynamax moves were a good move. Yeah, Dy uh, Dynamax definitely uh, was crafted very much so for competitive. For I don't think. All, though, as was terrestrialization, I think. I don't think as much, but. I think you so, yeah. But it's. How it's many a things fun have a different Terra type on this team? Uh, a couple, not a lot, but a couple. Like <laughs> half of it, half. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting with the Dragonite, and I'm actually going to give you two more that both have different Terra types. Yeah, to illustrate how great and versatile uh, <laughs> Terra is, terrestrializing <laughs> is uh, competitively. Uh, symbolism is, oh, that's the nickname Iron Moth, uh, the superior moth uh, paradox, in my opinion. Uh, we got Booster Energy, obviously Quark Drive, because what else are you going to have? Uh, Terra type Fairy. Hmm. Uh, with 132 special, 124 special defense, and 252 speed with a timid nature. Um, of course, you don't have to invest all the way into special attack because we've got Fiery Dance, and who doesn't love that? Uh, we've also got Dazzling Gleam, Energy Ball, and Psychic, so just a disgustingly good attacker. It's just such a good move pool. It's, yeah, I mean, and then the Fairy type, so you've got Stab on Dazzling Gleam and Fiery Dance, love that. And then uh, a Meow uh, Scarada, actually, with a Focus Sash. And unfortunately, it only has Overgrow at the moment. Um, no, it doesn't have access to its uh, hidden ability. Oh, does it? Oh, so they just chose to give it Overgrow. Yeah, yeah because it's. I don't think its hidden ability is actually that great. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, um, I mean, they really nerfed it. Uh, it's a shame. Right when it gets to the grass type, they decide to nerf it. <laughs> only changes one per switch in. Um... Changes your type once for switching. Yeah, and the and the problem not. with the problem with Miascarada, unlike Cinderace or Grid Ninja before it, uh, they it, its move pool isn't nearly as deep as either of them in terms of. Although I suspect types. it would probably grow with um you know DLC. The DLC may the grow it, did. but it does it does prevent like if you look at the types it would turn into. It's literally just going to turn into a grass or a dark type. Ninety. I mean, I'm looking the at the types. I mean, here's what's interesting. It's a ghost type Terra type and has no ghost moves. No, it's doing that to prevent from being punched in the face. That uh, makes sense. But like, uh, that checks out. But like, oof. Or a bug type for that matter. Yeah. Hasty nature. Four attack, 252 special attack, and 252 speed. So the rare mixed sweeper. Or not Sweeper, but Mixed Attacker. Not Sweeper. It's got Leaf Storm, um, Knock Off, Spikes, and Taunt. So, Spikes, there you knock go. Knock Off is just good, though. Knock Off is just good. Knock Off has always been good. And it doesn't have infinite distribution anymore, so... No, Having doesn't. something with Knock Off is nice. I'm very happy it doesn't have infinite distribution. Yeah. Um, we also have Iron Treads instead of the typical uh, Great Tusk that you would see in OU. But Iron Treads, Holding Booster Energy... Um, it's got Quark Drive because that's the ability it has. Um, 258 special attack, which is very interesting. 
Two fifty two speed, four special defense, uh, timid nature, steel beam, which is fun. Uh, it has the steel type hyper beam, rapid spin because you're gonna go burr and go fast to get after you get rid of some hazards. Um, it's also got thunder, which is fun, and stealth rock. Um, its terror type is also ghost, mostly uh, most likely to prevent it from getting hit by a fighting type move again, much like the Meowskarata. I mean, th- these are the Pokemon that you're probably never gonna terror type in a matchup, so. They're it's less just, likely, for yeah. sure. Yeah, They're just doing it defensively. Um, it also has Stealth Rock, so you can set up your own hazards. Um, it, it's, uh, it, it's so fun. I imagine the entire, the entire point of it is to set up Stealth Rocks and then just hope that you can do anything else with it. <laughs> I mean, special Iron Treads. Yeah, anything that you want to do, af- anything you do after you click Stealth Rock, uh, have fun. Um, then we yeah. also have uh, a dragon pul- Dragapult to round out the team, doing essentially Dragapult things. It's Choice Specs, Infiltrator, Terra Type is Ghost, just in case you want Shadow Balls to do more. Um, 252 Special Attack, 252 Speed, 4 Special Defense, that probably doesn't matter. Um, modest Nature, it's got Shadow Ball, Draco Meteor, Flamethrower, and U-Turn. That is just Dragapult, throwing moves, throwing hands, hitting things hard. Or getting out of dodge when people get scared that it showed up. But that is the team. Um, if you're a patron, we're going to give out the shiny versions of it this week. So be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash pucklepodcast. You can, of course, uh, also just check out the team on the Discord. And you can try it out on Showdown for yourself. See if you like it. Um, it does look like a fun OU team. OU is finally starting to settle down. Thank God. So we'll see how it goes here in the near future. But uh, yeah, let's have some fun and try out the team. But until then, we are going to kick it on over to our mailbag. It's mail time! It's time for the mailbag! Send in your emails! Welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, part of the show where you can email us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com and you can let us know what you think of the show prior or anything about Pokemon for that matter. Uh, last week we asked you guys what about normal types since we rank them and boy did you guys have opinions as you always do when we talk about our favorite Pokemon. I, we can't obviously read them all but a lot of you can, uh, can definitely uh, join in the discussion but we will read a couple of them today. Uh, of course, this segment is brought to you by the fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! And as always, we'll give out the Green Taurus badge to anybody we deem worthy. All right, so our first email this week is going to come to us from Rooker. How's it going, Puckle people? Rooker here, and I want to talk about your normal list. For the most part, I agree with it. Normal type, while beloved, is kind of a catch-all term for Pokemon and can be pretty uninspired. But there was one name that was not even considered in your entire discussion. Slacking. What the heck? This is my definitive normal type choice. Lazy, dumb, ability, but makes, but, uh, amazing stats. This guy can go toe to toe with Groudon every other turn. <laughs> but still, <laughs> but still it has a unique niche that can be fun to play around for that pure power. It also has a surprising diverse move pool that I did not expect when I looked this up. Also, as a side note, I can understand if you missed Miltank. Whitney made me strike her entire gym from memory. <laughs> Anyway, love you guys and enjoy your Sunday. Yeah, after that, uh, what was yeah. the, what was the first one where that Gen happened? Six. Yeah, Gen, Gen Six. six. Uh, I just wanted to strike that entire Pokemon from my memory. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, moo, 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 moo. All right, we've got another one from Arlo Artivan. Hello, Puckle Podcast. My name is Arlo Artivan, a somewhat longtime lurker. And if you're reading this, you're reading out my first email on the show. So thank you. Without further ado, here are my top five and bottom five normal types in ascending order. Top, Slaking, the original handicap powerhouse. I've always enjoyed the line, and although I was more partial to Vigoroth, I fell in love with the final stage during my Ribbon Master Challenge to fully ribbon out my Corsola as he choice banded his way through gens three and four. <laughs> I love it. Hoenny and Loon is number four. I started with Hoenn, and while I'm also a fan of Poochiana, I love Wurmple and the original Zigzagoon line will always be a favorite. Great shiny, never never my H employee. <laughs> oh god, that's a good name. <laughs> H employee. Um lovingly crafted regional variant, plus they're fun to use with extreme speed and belly drum. Number three, Porygon Z. One of the great man-made Pokemon. Porygon has a phenomenal evolutionary line that each functions differently in battle, and it's always fun to find out how it appeared in different regions, especially with PLA, with Laventon's entries 
This worries me. It just sucks that it has do- a double trade evolution. Number two, Hisoian Zoroark. In my opinion, the best entry in PLA. Hisoian Zo- Zoroark has a very fun secondary typing in Ghost, great design, and shiny, and is officially the first Hisoian Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. I still remember advertising ga- the advertising Game Freak did in- of the Explorer in the Mountains searching for this Pokemon. Chills me. Number one, Ditto. I love Ditto. The OG breeder, offspring of Mew, imposter sweeper, that and just adorable blob that'll always make me laugh in its TCG appearances copying other Pokemon. There are many sta- standout Kanto normal types, but Ditto, Ditto is, in my opinion, one of the most recognized. Bottom. Per ugly. Fat, sneering cat, faster than the Laddie twins. Agree. There are many cats in Pokemon, and many, in my opinion, have been done better. So true, though. I love Per ugly. The thing is, I love Glamio. I love Glamio. No, no, I said this on the show last week. Glamio yeah. is way better than Per Agree. Ugly. Agree. Way better. What are you guys talking about? Per Ugly is like the fat cat that you go over to your grandma's house and you're always so happy to see, you know? I want a Glamio. I want Glamio. I want the Glamio, not the Per Ugly. <laughs> I'll take a Del Caddy. I want like a pretty cat. <laughs> Sorry. Like <laughs> You don't think Per Ugly's pretty? No. It's in the name. <laughs> I think they shafted it with that name. I think they shafted it with that name, man. I think I think Perugly is wonderful. I think it's just a beautiful little prince. <laughs> I'm so glad you feel that way because someone needs to love it. Because <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> Somebody likes every Pokemon. That's true. Except for Silcoom. No one likes Silcoom. Cascoom's I think better. that's probably right. <laughs> Number four, Greedent. Greedent's face scares me, and it steals my berries. I can't even escape for, oh, escape it away from the wild, as its face is a mascot for one of the Galar stores. Number three, Watchog. A face even scarier than Greedent's. Fit, fit with a safety jacket to hurt my eyes even more. Super Fang, <laughs> Hypnosis, and Confuse Ray make Encounters a drag, which makes which hurts an overall entertaining region. I actually do agree with that. Encounters with Watchog are terrible. I actually really like Watchog um, for personal reasons because I made because uh, I run a PTU campaign, as you all know. I, the evil team uses Watchog as like their lookout. Oh, really? That's cute. <laughs> so I've used a lot of Watchog. It's cute. Yeah, I like Watchog. Number two, Licky Licky. I was never the biggest fan of Lickitung. It was a very forgettable Pokemon that I only remember due to the one you can trade for. Hi, Mark. But how many how many bars of Wi-Fi do you have? Yeah, exactly. My face turned, and it still turns to this day when I saw the a rounder lick a tongue with a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man face with a free Wi-Fi on his belly. Yep. <laughs> uh, number one, Mill Tank. I was never a fan to begin with, but I, when it when I returned to Pokemon in Gen Six, why? Why did they animate Mill Tank to bounce in such a way? I close my eyes, and I can still see the udders. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's my list. I won't ramble on. Thank you for providing a quality podcast. Until next time, Arlo Artivan. <laughs> Thanks, man. The, oh, that was good. That was a good email. People really feel some type of way about Miltank, don't they? <laughs> so, like the two out. Of, so I read all these emails, and the two there were three Pokemon that popped in very, very often. And the three that popped in a lot were Miltank as like a very negative choice, um, getting yelled at that we forgot Snorlax. Snorlax came up a lot. And then getting yelled at that we forgot slaking. No. Yeah, that one I don't really agree with. No one forgot it. It just was taking a nap when, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. Uh, We've got this last one, though, from the Aussie Crocodile. The Aussie Crocodile. Love the name. Good eye, Puckle Crew. I'm so sorry, Seth Vilo. That was the best Aussie accent I've ever done. And you weren't here. (laughs) I've been listening to the podcast for over uh, for just over two years now, and I stumbled across it when my passion for Pokemon was reignited after my son asked for a Switch for Christmas back in 2020. Two weeks later, I had got my own so just so I could jump in on the action. I now listen to your podcast every Monday on my way home from work. Before I get to the topic, I would like to thank you guys for a bit of advice I heard a while ago while listening. I couldn't find the exact timestamp or what was exactly said, but it went the li- along the lines of, Do what brings you joy! And you will find your people. It was said by Thatch to another co-host in response to a comment about growing up without a lot of friends because you played Pokemon. This advice has opened a door for me, which has changed the way I approach raising my children and also treat others in my life. Again, I would like to thank you for your wise word. My son recently had a birthday party and all his mates came around and I was able to breed and trade off all the raid Pokemon they had missed out on. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of the parents were more stoked than the kids as they had not been able to defeat the raids themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Which has given my son and I the title of Pokemon Masters at the local school. <laughs> 
Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, I love this so much, actually. That's awesome. Uh, so much. I'm like, yes, get it. All right. Um, Righto. Now for the topic, normal types. Yawn, as most refer to it as being the boring type. The Larry type. Well, first of all, Larry is an icon. Um, I'm obsessed with Larry. Larry is my favorite. Larry's amazing, by the way. Larry's amazing. Larry is awesome. Larry is <laughs> everything. I love Larry. <laughs> Hashtag my favorite type. Your list was okay, but come on. Where's the big boy Snorlax? The mountain of a Pokemon who is the definition of a normal uh, type. Big, soft, and powerful. A bit like myself. <laughs> I was racking my brain for reasons why he was left out. I know legendaries hardly get a mention, and maybe, like myself, you hold that big boy in the legendary tier as I do. I just wanted to touch base and show my appreciation for the podcast, and I look forward to continuing the journey together. You guys kill it each week. Much love from Down Under, the Aussie crocodile. Dude, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Love it. Obsessed. Like, give him the badge. Give him the badge. I like both the last two. Like, the last two. I know. I know. They're both very good. Yeah. I do think we have to give it... I think we do have to give it to the Aussie Crocodile, though. I mean, he's the Pokemon master at his school. (laughs) Okay, I want to talk to him more, though. Like, I just... I I want to talk to him more, because I love that. This is, like, fantastic. I love that. I love that. I I want to help out in any way I can. (laughs) And I'm so happy that uh, Puckle helped you succeed, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, that's not what I intend to do. I don't want to take any credit, because you're doing some awesome stuff. Oh my gosh, he's doing awesome stuff. Exactly. Very that. Yeah. Uh, I really love this. So, I'm very happy you got to be you got to be the Pokemon Master of your school. Yeah, the Aussie Crocodile gets it. Yeah, he just gets it. Uh, I'm here <laughs> for it. Reach out to us on Discord, and we'll hand it over to you. Uh, other, yeah, and then at the same time, I'll talk to you because I want to know if I can help <laughs> and make it even better, make you even more of a Pokemon master. All right, so that's gonna be it for this week's show. If you want to email us next week, great way to do so is just send us an email at pucklepodcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, trauma dump us about the anime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please do. Uh, tell us uh, tell us anything you feel about the anime. I want to know. We all had feelings. Oh boy, did we. And if you're our age, you probably do too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was it, it's just a lot is a very big moment in Pokémon history, and I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Uh additionally, if you want to keep up with us throughout the week, come to our Discord, PuckleDiscord.com. You can, of course, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, additionally, you can check us out at YouTube. I was planning a stream this week, but my basement is still not done. <laughs> I'm hoping I can stream this week. Okay, my basement should be done t- today or tomorrow. And so hopefully this Tuesday, you'll you'll see me on stream. Maybe even Thursday. I just want to get back into it. I miss playing Pokemon with you guys. And then, of course, we can uh, go ahead and stream uh stream and have a good time over at youtube.com slash puckle podcast additionally if you'd like to uh help support the show or patreon exists you can go to patreon.com slash puckle podcast and support the show over there but until then guys uh i have been trainer thatch and i continue to be sublime and i've been basket and here in the lavender town radio tower it is closing time (laughs) 